Chanyuan Corpus. 40 Evidences Proving the Existence of the Greatest Creator. Xiefeng. Take a broad view, and you will see faraway mountains are fresh and green. Stay and study in life a Chanyuan will a new life begin. You will see clear paradise scenes. Once we fall into deep meditation, we can feel that there is a supernatural power in control of the movement of the universe and the birth and death of all things in the track of human life. No one can deny the fate, yet no one can grasp his own fate. Everything about us seems to be prearranged by certain powers, and we are only moving according to the life courses assigned to us. Then, whether such a supernatural power exists or not, whether there is a super wisdom in control of the entire universe or not. If there is not, then how did the universe come into being? Where did the variety of life forms come from? If there is, where could the supernatural power be? What is his form? Does it look like a man? What characteristics does he have? Why we cannot see it? Does it care for humankind? How does it manage this astronomical universe? How shall we get to know it? One dot there should be someone behind the orderly operation of the solar system. With the sun as its center, the solar system consists of the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, comets, the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, meteoroid, interstellar matter, the Earth's satellite moon, and other asteroids. Attracted by the gravitation of the sun, other celestial bodies revolve around the sun. Among them, the nine planets revolve in the same direction around the sun along the nearly round orbits in approximately the same plane. For billions of years, the solar system has been running in the Milky Way galaxy in an orderly manner, and with no single mistake. The nine planets, the Earth's satellite moon, and other asteroids have unfailingly and willingly maintained the order of the solar system. They cooperate tacitly with each other, conforming and obedient. There has never been any bullying. There is a high degree of organization, discipline, and unity. If any one of the planets does not obey command and acts on itself, the whole solar system will immediately be knocked over by other stellar systems in the galaxy. Then the main task of the whole solar system, sustaining the life on Earth, will not be possible, and man will also perish. To live harmoniously, a big family of about a dozen people will need some domestic disciplines to keep it in line. A company, small it may be, must have rules and regulations if it hopes to survive and develop. A house should have a design before builders can begin work, how the doors, the windows, the kitchen, the living room, the bedrooms, and the bathroom should be arranged. To survive, even a pack of wolves, a swarm of bees, a cohort of ants, or a flock of sheep must have a leader in charge, otherwise the result will be a state of disunity and chaos. Let's take a look at the general manager's office. The desk, the chairs, the bookshelf, the sofas, the tea table, the telephone, and the like are all arranged in an orderly manner. The tea table will not be placed on the desk. The chairs will not be put on the sofas. Why? Because these have already been designed and arranged. Let's have a look at the workshops of a factory. The lathes, the milling machines, the planers, the drill presses, the machining tables, the grinding wheels, and the tool cabinets are arranged in an orderly manner. They will not be piled up and thrown here and there. Why? For someone is doing the arrangement. Let's take a look at the streamline of the assembly workshop of TV sets. There is a strict order for the assembly of different components. Is this order formed naturally? Of course not. There must be someone doing the design and arrangement. Let's take a look at everything in nature and every activity in human society. It is not difficult to discover that all have been organized and arranged by someone or a certain brain. Then how about the orderly functioning of the solar system? Is it not designed by someone? By logical reasoning, we can infer that there must be someone in charge of the creation and arrangement of the solar system. But who is this someone? He must be the planner and designer of the universe and the wise omniscience, the greatest creator. Two dot the distance from the earth to the sun is a result of deliberate arrangement. The distance from the Earth to the Sun is 147 million kilometers, which is the ideal distance for the Earth to absorb the solar energy. If it is too far, the Earth will be cold and bleak place. If it is too close, the Earth will be a flaming globe. You must have had the experience of warming yourself by fire in the cold winter days. Your distance from the fire will be decided by the state of the fire. 
If you are too close to the fire, the heat will be beyond your endurance. If you are too far from it, you cannot absorb the heat. You will automatically adjust yourself to an appropriate distance which is not too warm to be put up with. Now you can do a calculation. Imagine yourself as the earth and the fire seat as the sun. What will be the proportion? Let's suppose the proportion is x, then the proportion from the sun to the earth is also x. That is to say, the distance between the sun and the earth is not a matter of coincidence but a deliberate arrangement. Except the greatest creator, who else can do that? 3. The rotation of the earth is a planned arrangement and the velocity of the rotation has been accurately calculated. If we keep facing the fire, then our body's front part will be very comfortable but back part will be still very cold. At this time, we will unconsciously turn around and make our back face the fire. After some time, we will turn around again. In such a case, wouldn't it be ideal for us to sit in an automatically rotating chair so that all our body can evenly receive the warmth? However, the rotation should not be too fast, otherwise we will feel dizzy and cannot see the objects around us clearly. More dangerously, we might be thrown off the chair. Too slow a rotation won't do either. One side of the body is warm enough, but the other side is in urgent need of heat, and yet the chair has not turned around. Then certainly we can find an optimum rotation speed that can make us feel comfortable and warmed evenly. The Earth is rotating at an ideal speed. It rotates at nearly 28 kilometers a minute and revolves around in 24 hours. This speed ensures that both the east and the west hemispheres can get the heat evenly and that animals, plants and men can have the time for labor and rest respectively. Suppose the earth does not rotate, the east hemisphere will be facing the sun all the time. Everyone would feel the unbearable heat, while the west hemisphere will be in a constant darkness and the cold, which will be too extreme to for men to bear. Vice versa. If the rotation is too fast, for example 12 hours for the earth to turn around itself, then there will be only three hours respectively for morning, noon, dusk, and night. The sun will be high up in the sky before we have enough sleep. If we wait till we have enough sleep, then we will wake up only to find the darkness night is out there again. Shall we get up or continue sleeping? If the earth rotates too slowly, for example 36 hours for it to complete a circle, then we will have 18 hours of day and 18 hours of night respectively. Plants will either have too much or too little photosynthesis, climate will suffer abnormality, we shall find it hard to arrange the time of work and rest. The rotation of Earth and the speed of rotation are well planned and accurately arranged by the greatest creator. If you are not convinced, just try it yourself and see whether you can come out with better arrangement. For dot the Earth orbits the Sun and its running speed is in strict accordance with the laws of physical movement. The Earth orbits the Sun at the speed of 298 kilometers per second, which does not allow for the slightest error. If the speed exceeds 298 kilometers per second, the Earth will fly off its orbit along the tangent and enter the vast universe. The life on Earth will all go extinct for lack of appropriate light and heat from the Sun. If the speed is slower than 298 kilometers per second, the Earth, failing to reach the escape velocity, will be drawn to the Sun. That is, the earth will fall to the sun, just like an apple falling down to the ground. Isn't this terrible? It is well known that the satellites of earth should orbit the earth at the speed of 79 kilometers per second. If the speed is faster, they will not be able to fly around the earth along a certain orbit. If the speed is slower, the satellites will fall down to the earth. The speed must reach 111.8 kilometers per second to escape the constraint force of the earth. The speed must reach 166.7 kilometers a second to escape from the solar system. These are absolute numerical values, allowing for no exception or negotiation. So, now think it over. Why the Earth should revolve around the Sun at exactly 298 kilometers per second? Why it is not any other numerical values? Without the calculation and arrangement of a superwise being, is it possible for the Earth to run for 4.6 billion years, obediently, meticulously, and voluntarily? 5. The tilting of the Earth is deliberately set up. As far as the orbit of the Earth is concerned, the Earth is tilted at a gradient of 23.5 degrees. You can use a globe as a sample. Without the tilting, there will be no alternating seasons on the Earth. The equator will be unbearably hot. 
The temperate zone will be turned into the frigid zone, and Siberia of Russia will be part of the Antarctica. If the tilting is at 90 degrees, the ice and snow in Antarctica will all be melted and the Earth will be a complete ocean, with no single stretch of lands. Then can the Earth tilt at 24 degrees or 23 degrees? Absolutely not. If the Earth tilts at 24 degrees, all the coastal cities will be submerged by water. If the Earth tilts at 23 degrees, the Earth will suffer from severe water shortage and many rivers will disappear. Just imagine, will it work without the computation and design of a superwise being? Then who is this superwise being? Neither you nor me, but the greatest creator. Six dot the moon is the guarantee of life on Earth. First, let's look at some moon-related figures. The moon is 380,000 kilometers away from the Earth. The mass of the moon is approximately 181st of the Earth's mass. The moon completes a circle around the Earth every 25 hours. It takes 27.3 days for the moon to go along its orbit as well as autorotation for one circle. The time interval between the first full moon and the next is 29.5 days. It tilts at 5 degrees in relation to the ecliptic. The orbit of the moon is oval. The moon moves westward. The above data are the warranty for life on Earth, and even the slightest changes will pose catastrophe to life on Earth. Some people have whimsically thought of blasting the moon. Others objected to the idea, arguing, the moon should not be blasted, because without moon man will lose some sentiment. Actually, the matter is not so simple. Without the gravitation of the moon, there would be no ebb and flow in the ocean, and no wind, cloud, rain and snow, and thunder and lightning on the earth. And accordingly, no life would exist. Do we need to bother with such a simple reasoning? Someone may agree, there may be no life on land, yet there would still be life in the oceans. The answer is negative. Is it possible for an absolutely still sea to breathe life? Moreover, without moon, it is impossible for us to have inspirations like. So bright a gleam on the foot of my bed. Could there have been a frost already? Lifting my head to look, I found that it was moonlight. Sinking back again, I thought suddenly of home. Without the moon, no life could survive on Earth. Therefore, the moon is specially set up there, for the life on the Earth, or we might say especially for man. Then who has set up the moon? Our ancestors? Dinosaurs? Who but the greatest creator can have such power and capacity to hang the moon in the sky? Seven dot the distance between the moon and the Earth allows for no deviation. The distance between the Earth and the Moon is 384,400 kilometers. If the distance is shorter than this, the Earth will be ravished by raging gusts and torrential rains. If the distance is farther than this, there would be only gentle breezes, occasional drizzles on Earth, and there would no longer be great storms, typhoons, and thunder and lightning. In another word, the life on Earth will suffer bad weathers and harsh environments. Just imagine what may happen if a jet plane schemes one meter above our heads. Not to mention the impact of the infrasonic waves and shock waves generated by the fast-flying plane. Even the whirls of air current brought about by the flight will carry us off our feet. The tiles on the roofs will certainly be blown away, and a course of water gully and water wall will be formed when the plane schemes over the water. Suppose the volume of the plane is as three football pitches, what will happen when it flies past the surface of the earth? The consequence will be catastrophic. In the area it passes by, there will be scenes of general turmoil and mess, with animals scampering for dear life, men and horses thrown off their feet, walls tumbling, wind roaring, and waves billowing. The ships on the sea will be wrecked, and the coastal areas will be frequently pestered by sudden pours of storms. If this situation continues every 25 hours, the survival of life on Earth will be unimaginable. What would happen if this plane were the moon? Not to mention the effect of other harsh elements on life. One flight of such a plane would bring one-third of the ocean's water to the land. If it flew around the globe for one time, the resultant hurricane would cause downpours to descend from sky and all the continents would be transformed into an ocean. Then will life survive? Therefore, the distance between the Earth and the moon cannot allow the slightest deviation. Then who has designed so appropriate a distance? Undoubtedly, the design has been made with accurate calculation by superior life more intelligent than human being. Eight dot great storms, typhoon, and thunder and lightning are deliberately choreographed. The occurrence of the great storms, 
typhoon, and thunder and lightning is due to the existence of the moon. Without gales, the convection of hot and cold airs on Earth will be impossible. The chilly and sweltering weathers will continue for longer spells. The clouds over the ocean will not drift toward the land, and there will be no rain or snow. Without billows, there would be no gales. Without typhoon, the vapors over the ocean cannot be carried to the plains and the plateaus. Without thunder and lightning, the missing ozonosphere will not be replenished in a timely manner. As a result, ultraviolet radiation and other cosmic rays will shine directly on man. Everyone will suffer skin cancer. Without thunder and lightning, the air cannot be cleaned, and countless viral bacteria will multiply uncontrolled. Man will no longer multiply, and the Earth today will see no footprints of man. 9. The whole solar system has been set up especially for man. We can see, as mentioned above, the distances between the celestial bodies, the sizes of different celestial bodies, and their speeds of movement have all been accurately and meticulously designed and arranged in strict accordance with the scientific laws of the survival and development of matter, with not an iota of coincidence. Some people may argue, the sun and the earth are extremely important to mankind, but the other celestial bodies in the solar system are just dispensable. Actually, this is not the case. Mercury, Venus, Mars, asteroid clusters, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all set up to protect the Earth. They are the additional bodies of the Earth, and obviously have been set up and arranged for man. A riddance of any heavenly bodies or a change to any factor will alter the orbit of the Earth and man will not survive on Earth. Life only exists on Earth in the entire solar system, and there is absolutely no life on other planets, because they are appurtenances of the Earth. To discover the secrets of the universe, astronomers have created countless space telescopes to observe the space all days and nights. This is too tiring a task. Actually, if only we are capable of calculating and thinking, we can calculate. Starting from man's basic necessities for survival, the masses of the Earth, the Moon, and other celestial bodies, the distances between them, their orbits and speed. Without looking up into the sky, we can know what is there beyond Pluto and whether Uranus has satellites. When we come to know that there are superior life spaces apart from human society, we can infer the size and structure of the entire universe. When we are aware of this, we will discover that there are no superfluous galaxies and celestial bodies in the universe and that each has its function and position. Suppose we are in a highly democratic and developed country, we can infer from the clean and tidy streets that the country has a highly efficient urban sanitation management. From the size of the city and its population, and the living standard and other factors, we can work out the number of dust men in this city without counting them one by one from each street to lane. If the actual figure is one more than our calculation, it is for temporary replacement in case of the absence of one of the dust men. 10. The Earth's Skin Aerosphere The aerosphere occupies the space from the sea level to 1,000 kilometers above. 99% of the atmosphere is concentrated within a space of 40 kilometers from the surface of the Earth and above. The aerosphere is divided into troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, ionosphere, and exosphere according to the different chemical components within various altitude ranges. The range about 18 kilometers above sea level belongs to the troposphere. 99% of the troposphere consists of vapor. The climatic changes and natural phenomena of thunder and lightning, wind and rain, drifting clouds, evening or morning glow, and rainbows all occur in the troposphere. The atmosphere consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% of other gases, such as carbon dioxide, argon, and ozone. The aerosphere is the skin of Earth without which, the Earth would be as bleak and desolate as the Moon, the Mars, and other celestial bodies. There would be no life on Earth. Then how did the Earth's skin come into being? Some may say the aerosphere only occurs naturally. Then why is there no aerosphere on the Moon and Mars? The proportions of different gases in the atmosphere are just right. The increase or decrease of the proportions of any gases would be catastrophic to life on Earth. For example, oxygen accounts for only 21% of the atmosphere. The absence of oxygen will mean the instant death of man and animals, and the reduced amount of oxygen will hinder the normal activities of man and animals. 
it is impossible to carry out normal activities on the summit of the Everest and Himalayas because of the scarcity of oxygen. The spacecraft must be equipped with adequate oxygen for astronauts to carry out normal explorative activities. If oxygen in the atmosphere accounts for more than 21%, the people and animals in the low-latitude regions may suffer poisoning and the inflammables in the nature will be liable to spontaneous combustion. An iota of spark may trigger many things ablaze. Apart from moisture, sunlight, and carbon dioxide, plants also need a large amount of nitrogen oxide for their growth. If the content of nitrogen is less than 78%, no matter how often or on what scales thunder and lightning may occur, there won't be enough nitrogen oxide created for the absorption of plants on the surface of the Earth. The amount of carbon dioxide accounts for less than 1% of the atmosphere. The small amount of carbon dioxide is the core factor of greenhouse effect, which maintains the global temperature between minus 21 degrees and 14 degrees Celsius. Without carbon dioxide, the ocean will be frozen up, and the plants will die out. However, with too much carbon dioxide, man and animals may die of poisoning and the temperature of the earth may rise dramatically. We may ask, how did atmosphere and the accurate proportions within the atmosphere come about? We cannot always attribute the inexplicable phenomena to naturally formed as a matter of course, can we? Without the careful attention of the parents, can a person grow up naturally after he was born? Is the lighting electricity we use generated naturally? Does the plane, weighing dozens of tons, fly naturally in the sky? Can we naturally reap a bumper harvest by simply throwing some seeds on the ground without hoeing the weeds, fertilization, and watering? There is absolutely nothing involuntary in the universe, and everything is managed and manipulated by someone or some kind of wisdom. What are you suspicious about then? 11. The Guardian of Life Ozonosphere up in the sky between the space 20 kilometers and 30 kilometers from the Earth's surface, there exists a sky blue transparent sphere. It is the ozonosphere in the stratosphere of the aerosphere, which is the guardian of life on Earth. Without it, the cosmic rays, especially the ultraviolet emitted by the sun, will shine on man and animals without any resistance. As a result, 99% of man and animal will be inflicted with cancer and 99% of man and animals will suffer cataract. The organism immune system of man and animals will be weakened. And any occurrence of contagious diseases like flu will wipe out man and animals in groups. Because of this, the Congress of Vienna in 1985 and the London Revised Conference in 1990 developed the resolution for a human to protect the ozone layer. Why? First discovered by a German scientist in 1839, ozone is a relatively unstable light blue molecule composed of three oxygen atoms. The molecule of ozone mainly results from the photolysis of intense ultraviolet. The content of ozone accounts for less than 100 thousandth in the atmosphere. 90% of ozone is concentrated in ozonosphere, which absorbs and filters the ultraviolet radiation waves readily absorbable by the nucleic acid in the biological cells ranging in wavelengths between 240 nanometers and 320 nanometers, these ultraviolet radiation waves will cause the above diseases and pose direct threat to the survival of life on Earth if they are absorbed by animals, plants, and man. Ozone and ozonosphere are protecting man, but the ozone inhaled by people near the ground is a harmful substance, which is capable of damaging the lung tissues and the photosynthesis reaction system of plants. As a mighty photochemical oxidant, it can cause great damage to rubber, plastics, and the life of animal and plants. It can react with the hydrocarbon of automobile exhaust and volatile gasoline to generate the organic pollutants like acetaldehyde and ketone. In 1973, two scientists from California University discovered that CCS artificial substance can damage the ozonosphere while the refrigeration industry and aviation industry are creating ozone. The activities of human being are pushing himself to the brink of extinction. This has brought the concern of scientists and far-sighted political leaders. And this is why people should protect the ozonosphere while prevent the increase of ozone in the troposphere, especially within the Earth's surface. The ozonosphere also has other functions. For example, it can rub against meteorites in the space and burn and digest them in the ozonosphere, or the Earth will be littered with meteorites and the weight of Earth would not be the same today.
the Earth would have fallen to the sun long before. I'm not here to discuss how to protect the ozonosphere, but to illustrate that the ozonosphere in the aerosphere has not formed naturally, that ozonosphere is not dispensable, but has been carefully designed and arranged by the greatest creator. 12. The blood of the earth, water. Can we perceive the existence of the greatest creator through water? To answer this question, first we will have a look at the property of water, the functions of water, and the circulation of water. Water is composed of numberless water molecules which are made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. One side of water molecule, the side with hydrogen atoms, is the anode, and the other side is the cathode. Since like charges repel each other, but opposite ones attract, then anode of a water molecule is linked to the cathode of another water molecule. As a result, as long as they exist in the same place container, all the water molecules will be linked together and form the water that we commonly refer to, because all the molecules have anodes and cathodes. Pure water is colorless, tasteless, and odorless. Its pH value is 7, neither acidity nor alkalinity. Water is the only substance in nature that can exist in three forms, solid, liquid, and gas. It has greater solubility than any other liquids. So water can transport the valuable chemical elements, minerals, and nutrition to plants, animals, and human body very easily. Water freezes and changes into solid state at 0 degrees Celsius and becomes boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius. When the surface of water is irradiated by heat, the water molecules on the surface can become vapor and changes into gas state. Water can absorb and disperse heat. Water has very strong surface tension. When the sun shines on the water surface, the heated water will evaporate and become vapor, which can continuously rise in the troposphere until the strong wind brings it to the distant sky over the land, where the rising warm air current from the heated land surface will force it to continue the ascension until it meets the cold air current. The temperature and the vapor content decrease dramatically in the troposphere with the increase of altitude. When vapor meets cold air current, it will revert to the state of liquid. When the temperature is cold enough, the vapor will change into minute crystals, particles, and form clouds when combined with dust, soot, and salt crystals. When these minute water granules combine to form larger water drops, they will fall to the ground in the form of rain as a result of the gravitation of the earth. Some of the falling rain returns to the oceans through the brooks and rivers, while some infiltrates underground to become groundwater. The groundwater can flow out to become surface water after hundreds of years and finally returns to the oceans. Some of the rain immediately changes into vapor after falling to the ground. The earth is a closed space of circulation for water. The total amount of water will neither increase nor decrease. Therefore, there will be no change in the total amount of water on earth no matter whether it is absorbed by plants, animals, and humans, or it is used to wash the diapers or has evaporated and risen up in the sky, whether it has flowed into the sewage pipes or infiltrated underground. Perhaps, the water molecule you are drinking was the water once drunk by Jesus or Sakyamuni, or used to wash diapers by a mother. The total amount of water on Earth is 3 to 6 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 cubic miles, of which the ocean takes up 97.24%, glaciers and icebergs account for 2.14%, the groundwater accounts for 0.61%, and rivers only accounts for 0.0001%. Let's see whether there is the greatest creator in water accordingly. Without water, the earth is nothing but a desert with no life on. No matter how capable man is, he cannot create water. In addition, people would have long perished without water, let alone create water. That is to say, water on earth is created by someone who does not need water. Who can exist without water? Someone wise may claim, water is not created, it is something existed on earth since time immemorial. If this opinion is correct, we can be sure that the earth has neither past nor future but is timeless in existence. Then astronomers and scientists' assertion that the earth was born 4.6 billion years ago is purely a traveler's tale. Furthermore, since the Earth has existed since time immemorial and the Earth is only a small component of the universe, there will be no question of the birth of the universe and the universe must also have existed since time immemorial. Since the universe has no beginning, 
then all the celestial bodies and galaxies in the universe must be timeless and eternal. So it is absolutely impossible for meteorites to fall on the Earth. Otherwise, the meteorites may have fallen from nowhere. Now that meteorites have fallen on the Earth, it means that changes have occurred in the space where certain celestial body has encountered disaster. The disaster that befalls on one celestial body will in turn affect the surrounding celestial bodies and trigger changes in other related celestial bodies. Thus will some celestial bodies perish someday? Will some new celestial bodies come into being? If a celestial body comes and goes, then undoubtedly the Earth can also come and go. If the Earth has a beginning, it is impossible that the Earth has possessed all the things now on Earth from the very beginning. There must have been a process of generation and development. So, where does water come from? If we say that the water on Earth has come into being naturally, then the following questions need to be answered. Why is water colorless, tasteless, and odorless? What if water has color, for example, if water is red or black? What if water has taste, for example, if water is spicy, sour, or astringent? What if water has smell, for example, if water emanates a fragrant or fishy smell? Why does water has a very powerful solubility? What will happen if water cannot dissolve the food we have eaten and the drug we have taken? If water cannot dissolve the red blood cells and white blood cells growing in the marrows? And if water cannot dissolve minerals, chemicals, and other nutritional substances? Why does the pH value of purified water stand at 7? What will happen if the pH value is smaller or greater than 7? Why does water have three states, gas, liquid, and solid? What will happen if water is only in the state of liquid and no gaseous or solid state? Will there be changes of climate on Earth if water cannot turn into vapor? Can we still see the blue sky? white clouds, morning or evening glows. If water cannot change into solid state at low temperatures and form a layer of ice on the lake surface to block the harsh cold, will the fish not be frozen to death? How much land will be left if the ice that accounts for 2.14% of the total water amount has melted into water? Why does the solid state of water have a smaller density than the liquid state of water? If the solid state of water has a greater density than the liquid state of water, the ice formed on the river surface will continuously sink to the bottom, and the rivers, lakes, and oceans will all be changed into solid ice. When will the heat of the sun melt the ice? Will there be life if all the fishes, shrimps, and turtles have been frozen? Why does water have a powerful function in absorbing and releasing heat? If water cannot absorb heat, the temperature of the equatorial areas in summer will be too high for man and animals to survive. The heat of the engines in our automobiles will not be carried away by water. And the pistons will be stuck inside the cylinders because of the heat expansion. If water does not have powerful heat dissipation, the temperate zone, especially the coastal regions, will be terribly cold in winter, and the heat in the engine will not be released. Why does water boil at 100 degrees Celsius? If water does not boil at 100 degrees Celsius, but at 20 degrees, many rivers, lakes, and oceans will have become a steaming pot where we can get boiled fish directly from. If water does not boil until it reaches 150 degrees Celsius, it would be impossible to boil food with ordinary pots, and it would be impossible to have food cooked at altitudes higher than 3,000 meters. Why does water have very strong surface tension? If water does not have very strong surface tension, how can it be absorbed by the root systems of plants and enter the venations of trees to bring nutrition to leaves and fruits? How can it move inside the capillary vessels of man and animals and transport nutrition to the surface layer of skins and the internal organs? Well, so much for the water subject. Just imagine, if water is not created by the greatest creator through careful arrangement, is it possible for the nature to create water with the above special functions? 13. Cheap and good daily necessity, salt. When I was a child, I used to see a woman with an extremely large neck in our village. Each time I saw her, I would involuntarily throw more glances to her. Later I asked my grandma, why is her neck so big? Grandma replied, according to doctors, because she did not have enough iodized salt. When I was young, there were a fairly large number of imbeciles in the two neighboring villages. I asked my father, why are there so many retarded people in those two villages? My father responded, possibly because they have had too much salt from Bayangali. Allow me to have a few words about my hometown here. 
I spent my early childhood in my hometown where the Yellow River and Dashya River met. My family had a garden and orchard where I could look westward at the spectacular view of Yellow River falling from the sky, which glittered in the sunshine. Northward, across the river there were the beautiful scenes of Wangjia Mountain and Wangjia Plain, and the flocks of horses, cattle, and goats on the shoals. In the south, the wire pull boats and the sheepskin rafts were ferrying passengers across Dashia River. In the east, cascades of houses were shaded and embraced by green trees. The two springs near the village were warm in winter and cool in summer. All through the year, clear and sweet water flows from these springs, and I grew up drinking the water from them. Everyone thinks that his hometown is the best, but my hometown was extremely beautiful. Unfortunately, my hometown has now become the territory of Dragon King. The building of Lujiaxia Reservoir has created tremendous wealth for the five provinces and autonomous regions in northwest China, but at the same time sacrificed my hometown. The building of the motherland needs everyone's sacrifice, and this is very reasonable. But what remains to be depressing is, dear motherland, you have forgotten the people who have dedicated their homeland. I was barely a teenager when I left my beloved hometown and migrated to a new place, which was intersected with ravines. There was barren soil, endless desolation, and no more beautiful sceneries. What remained were the primordial scenes of struggling for survival. My uncle had to leave for other places with my cousins and beg for food. These scenes are still vivid and fresh in mind, and each time I, I recall, my tears will run on my face. Motherland, can't you make some compensation for your faithful children who have sacrificed for you? Yes, you can, and you did. Every time you only gave us a set of selected works of Mao Zedong for consolation. Your representatives came five times, so our family got five sets of selected works of Mao Zedong. The spiritual power is infinite, and the force of example is immense. But you have overlooked the fact that we are merely ordinary people. Even if you have piled my house and courtyard with selected works of Mao Zedong, we still need food and clothes, need to get married. Motherland. Have you ever thought of the life of those poor people who have sacrificed their homeland for you when you spent hundreds of millions RMB decorating the Chang'an Avenue? Now let me return to the topic. There is a deep gully called Bayan Gully near the two villages just mentioned. In the gully there flows a gurgling stream, not of clear spring water, but of salty and turbid water. In order to save a few coppers earned from selling eggs while having salt, the people there made salt from the water of Bayan Gully. The question whether the people in the two villages got retarded from eating the salt from buying gully can be left to scientists. We can infer from the two examples that salt is extremely important to man. In human history, the salt business was very profitable. Salt merchants were the symbol of wealth. Countless fights and wars have broken out between men for the control of salt origin in the channel of salt business. In ancient times, the soldiers were offered salt as a prize, and the laborers were also paid by salt. When salt became a rarity, it was more valuable than gold. Just as water and air, none of U.S. can live without salt. Our daily food can dispense with any other seasoning, but not salt. Apart from water and air, salt is the most important necessity for life among natural resources. The main component of salt is sodium chloride. Rock salt, lake salt, salt bed salt, and sea salt may differ in their respective structures and composition. For example, the refined salt we usually purchase from stores is cubic crystal in structure, while the lake salt is polygonal crystal. The best salt should be sea salt made through the sunlight-caused evaporation of seawater. Such salt contains over 80 minerals needed by human body, including iodine, calcium, potassium, magnesium, aluminum, barium, chromium, iron, manganese, fluorine, zinc, nickel, copper, phosphor, and the like. Salt is not only a superior seasoning and preservative, but also the key substance to keep us healthy and vigorous. Salt can help the digestion of food and transfer the nerve impulses to muscle tissues. But consumption of too much salt will do damage to the heart and cause high blood pressure and overweight as well as the decline of kidney function, the disorder of menstruation, and edema. The most important thing for life is air. Without air man will die immediately, so there must be adequate supply of air to guarantee the viability of life. The second most vital thing is water. Without water man cannot survive for long, 
so there must be a great reserve of water to keep life going. The third most important thing for life is salt. Without salt, man can survive for a longer time, but will die eventually of weak limbs and frail body. Therefore, it is also necessary to have a certain amount of salt in store of which can be obtained with little effort. When we shop for salt, we will find that salt is lower priced in comparison with other goods. As for gold, pearls, and diamonds, they are only ornamentals for life and are not necessities, so they are scarce in amount and are not easily obtained. If the sea water is not salty, there will not be salt on earth. Since sea water is inexhaustible, so we will never be short of salt. Now let's see. For life and nature, the more important things are, the greater are their supply, the less important thing are, the smaller are their supply. Is this simply a matter of unconscious coincidence of nature? Or is a purposefully arrangement by some mysterious power? 14. Photosynthesis, the source of food for life. To survive, man needs not only air, water, and salt, but also needs to absorb nutrition, mainly carbohydrate. Where does carbohydrate come from? It comes from photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a process of converting sunlight energy to chemical energy through carbon dioxide and water to produce the nutrition needed by animals and plants, carbohydrates. Human body itself cannot conduct photosynthesis, neither can any other animals. Photosynthesis mainly occurs within green plants. Therefore, man must live on green plants. Photosynthesis can be briefly described as follows. When sunlight shines upon the leaves of plants, it will be captured by chlorophyll in the cells of leaves. The light energy captured by chlorophyll will decompose the water entering the leaves via roots into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen will be released through the pores on the leaves, while hydrogen will be kept within leaves and will react with carbon dioxide entering the leaves via pores on the leaves to form carbohydrates. The vigorous carbohydrates will spread in the plant cells through veins and enable the absorption and growth of plants. The most common type of carbohydrate is glucose, which will combine with nitrogen to form amino acids, proteins, and nucleic acids needed by life. Nitrogen is carried inside plants mainly through the water absorbed by the root systems of plants. Because of photosynthesis, part of carbohydrates formed inside the plants will be supplied to plant itself, and the rest will be stored in the leaves and fruits. Man and animals absorb carbohydrates by consuming the leaves and fruits of plants. Carbohydrates are compounds composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. Sugar, glucose, and fructose are simple carbohydrates, while starch and cellulose are more complex carbohydrates. The molecules of simple carbohydrates have only a few carbon and hydrogen atoms. While the molecules of complex carbohydrates have many carbon and hydrogen atoms. In terms of sources, all the food we eat originates from photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, there would be no humans. Some people argue, I do not rely on plants, and can survive only on poultry and domesticated animals, so I don't need the photosynthesis of plants. The problem is without the photosynthesis of plants, there would be no poultry and domesticated animals because they rely on plants for survival. Of course, we can survive by eating fish, but fish also live on the photosynthesis of algae and some indigenous microorganism. From the point of nature, the only living things capable of making food are plants. Animals and men are not capable of making food themselves, because animal body and human body do not have the element for photosynthesis. In addition to providing food for itself, animals, and man, the photosynthesis of plant has a tremendous function, the absorption of carbon dioxide and the release of oxygen. If plants do not make oxygen, animals and plants would have died out long before. If the plants do not absorb the carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will exceed the constant, and greenhouse effect will aggravate, and the temperature of the earth would be too high for man and animals to survive. Do you think that the photosynthesis of plants begins and happens incidentally? 15. Dot symmetry in nature, mysterious and great power. Look into the mirror. You step forward, the person in the mirror steps forward, you move backward, he does the same. You smile, so does he. You raise your leg, and so does he. Take the mirror as tangent, you and your image in the mirror have formed symmetry. 
If an object is cut in halves vertically from the midpoint and the left and right sides completely overlap each other, then this object is a symmetrical object. Let's look at the microscopic and macroscopic world, and we will discover that the galaxies, the solar system, the earth, man, birds, tigers, fish, frogs, roundworms, flies, crickets, leaves, fresh flowers, butterflies, shells, eggs, seeds, cells, and so on are all symmetrical objects. Tornadoes, vortexes, diamonds, crystals, aparite, pearls, hairs, water droplets, the orbits of celestial movements, and helixes and others are all symmetrical. Among the Arabic numerals of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, the odd numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 are symmetrical with the even numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. The number of men is symmetrical with the number of women when considered in a larger timescale. Symmetry is omnipresent in the universe. Without symmetry, there would be no universe. Why does the protruding rafter rot first? For the protruding rafter destroys the symmetry. Why the leaning tower of Pisa looks uncomfortable? For it has lost its symmetry. Why some people are called the handicapped? For they lack symmetry. Why was the World Trade Center of America got bombed? For America has become exposed rafter that unsymmetrical with other countries. Why was Falun Gong suppressed? For it was not symmetrical with the Chinese culture then. Why have many ancient civilizations in human history have declined? For they have lost symmetry. Why monsters and demons are frightening? It is because they are unsymmetrical. Why the works of some artists look disgusting? It is because their works lack symmetry. Why some buildings appear unsafe? It is because these buildings are not symmetrical. Why are some people irascible? It is because they are psychologically unsymmetrical. Why are corrupt officials punished in the end? It is because their mentality is not symmetrical with those of the common people. Why are meteorites frequently seen in the sky? It is because these celestial bodies have lost their symmetry. Why did the emperor hang himself? It is because his existence was unsymmetrical with the situation of the time. Why does tranquility make one feel comfortable, while turbulence makes one feel nervous and upset? It is because tranquility is symmetrical but turbulence is unsymmetrical. Symmetry is a kind of harmony, perfection, aesthetics, and order. Why beauties are intoxicating? Why fresh flowers are pleasing to the eye? Why the music of moonlight of Spring River is so soothing? Why do the sculptures of great masters make appealing to us? Because they are harmonious and perfect, providing people with enjoyment of beauty. Try to think. If a girl's left eye is larger than her right eye, her mouth is a bit oblique. Only four fingers on her left hand, eight toes on her right foot, and her left leg is shorter than her right leg. How would you feel? Man is inclined to symmetry. Outstanding artists, painters, sculptors, musicians, and so on, architects, and political leaders are all experts on symmetry. Whoever understands symmetry understands the mystery of nature. Whoever has mastered symmetry will do things with ease and skill. A mature man is a psychologically symmetrical person, while a whimsical, eccentric, irascible, testy, and tempestuous person is no doubt psychologically unsymmetrical. Symmetry is perfect. Asymmetry is defective. Symmetry is long-lasting. Asymmetry is transitory. The reason for me to discuss symmetry here is to find out what power has made all things in nature symmetrical and why people are innately inclined to symmetry. Symmetry is a surface phenomenon, behind which is a mysterious and great power. The power controls in the form of symmetry to any overdevelopment and inharmonious kinetic energy and potential energy. Why does man have only two eyes instead of three? Why is the earth round? Why does the dog tail grow on its rear body? Why are the wings of butterflies and the wings of birds identical? Why do people dislike ugly things? Scientists will certainly seek answers from the characteristics and structures of particles like atoms, electrons, protons, neutrons, and photons which were proved in vain. For they could not explain the balance and symmetry for both sexes and why man does not grow a tail. So far, can we feel deep within our subconscious selves that a super wisdom is in control of all beings? If so, who is this super wisdom but the greatest creator? 16. Golden Mean, Perfect Proportion In 1996, 
I discovered hundreds of species of conches in the marine products market by the seaside of Dar es Salaam, the capital of Tanzania. Those shells were incomparably and unimaginably beautiful. The spiraling structure of the whelk, in particular, will dwarf the best works of any architect. Is the brain of a shell creature more advanced than that of a man? Later, by observing the flower discs of sunflowers, I discovered that the arrays of seeds in the discs take spiral shapes whether they are seen leftward or rightward, and that the seeds are not crowded upon each other no matter how many seeds there are in the discs. I figured the ancestors of sunflowers must have had college education or have obtained doctoral degrees. Otherwise, how could their offspring have ever thought of so perfect a sequence of arrangement? Then by observing the arrangement of the celestial bodies in the solar system, the size of the earth, and the arrangement of human body and plants, the arrays of branches and leaves of growing plants, the arrays of different petals, the sizes of various insects, and the arrangement of their trunks and legs, and the arrangement of five sense organs for limbs and torso of human body, and so on, I discovered that everything in nature has a certain proportion, which is not controlled by an organism itself, but predestined by heaven. Namely, there is a mysterious power that controls the development direction of an individual organism. Take man, for example. Please open your hand. Why are there only five fingers on the palm? Why is the mid finger longer than the other four fingers? Why the thumb does not stand in line with other four fingers? Why is the total length of the three knuckles of the little finger rightly the total length of two knuckles of the ring finger? Why does the thumb have only two condyles while all other four fingers have three? What will happen if the little finger is longer than the middle finger, the middle finger is shorter than the index finger, or if the middle finger has one more knuckle and is two centimeters longer than the index finger and ring finger? We can raise thousands of trillions of questions. For example, why has the height of man remained at about 1.73 meters for thousands of years? Why are the eyes of mice so small and the eyes of horses so large? Why cannot grass grow up into towering trees? Why does the size of man's penis match the depth and width of woman's vagina? So on so forth. As long as we examine a question thoroughly, we will have to admit that behind every phenomenon there is a mysterious power or enigmatic principle governing everything. There is a harmonious proportion between everything, for example, the galaxy, solar system, the earth, the moon, man, dog, bird, tree, grass, insect, bacterium, and so on. There are harmonious, appropriate, and insurmountable proportions between the different parts of everything. For example, the size of human body and its proportions with eyes, head, mouth, arms, legs, five internal organs, and blood vessels. Proportion is the greatest creator. That is to say, the various proportions are arranged by the greatest creator. The wisdom of the greatest creator is boundless, just like the circumference ratio pi, which is endless, enigmatic, and forever infinitely informative. With the discovery of circumference ratio, man has realized the greatest creator's extensive and profound wisdom in the endless mystery of the material world. Man cannot but feel thrilled and enthralled by the wonder and profundity of Mother Nature, spellbound by the infinite future of life, and fascinated by the wonderful future. Man's wisdom is also endless. Man has discovered another secret, imaginary number I, the square root of minus one. Does minus one have a square root? The rule sign of multiplication is, two positives make a positive, and two negatives also make a positive and the square of any number is a positive number. Then the square root of minus 1 does not exist at all. Now that the square root of minus 1 does not exist, why is the concept of imaginable number introduced? When science enters the period of quantum mechanics, even Einstein became puzzled, because he thought that the universe is orderly and that the future development and changes of anything are predictable as long as the current status is known. However, Quantum mechanics put forward the theory that accurate measurement is impossible. The more accurate the measurement of the position of a small particle, the less accurate the measurement of its speed. And if the speed of a small particle is accurately measured, the measurement of its position will not be accurate. Is it so? What is the expression of wave function of quantum mechanics? Without imaginable numbers, there would be no complex plane. Without complex plane, there would be no complex number. Without complex number, wave function cannot be expressed. When we probe deeper into the microscopic world, 
we will see that the seemingly illusory imaginable number has actually reflected natural loss. The illusory thing, regarded as impossible by people, actually plays a critical role. Hence we come to realize that, instead of a question of existence or not, the illusory power of the greatest creator is actually a decisive factor which determines the development and change of everything. Hence we realize that there is imaginary number in addition to real number, and that there is non-material world apart from material world. Hence we come to understand that in addition to the flesh of life there is a spiritual entity. And we come to understand that time is not only longitudinal but also transverse. That is, for material world time is longitudinal but transverse for the illusory, non-material world. As far as man is concerned, the time of man's flesh is longitudinal, with the past, the present, the future, the birth, and the death. But the spiritual entity of man is transverse, and at any point of time the spiritual entity can leave the flesh and enter the transverse time. The positive and negative numbers of the material world can form a function. Such a function has four quadrants, areas. If we include the imaginary numbers into the function, we will have a complex function. A complex function has 16 quadrants, areas. Ask yourself, please, which quadrant is my life in at present? The main purpose of this section is to explore the proportions in nature. Of all the proportions, people have found a special proportion, golden mean, another secret of nature after the circumference ratio pi and the imaginary number i. Then what is the golden mean phi? Take human body, for example. If the ratio of height and the length from soul to navel equals the ratio of soul to navel and from navel to top, then the proportion is golden mean. What's the proportion? The ratio of golden mean is 1.61803398874989484821. Let's look at another array of numbers. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, 377, 610. The above figures have a feature, that is, a number is just the sum of the previous two numbers. If each number of this array is divided by the number before it, we can derive the following numbers. 1, 2, 1.5, 1 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 
after crossing out the highest point and the lowest score. Why should the highest and lowest scores be crossed out? It is because they are problematic, discordant, and extreme. Things always reverse themselves after reaching an extreme. Everything must develop within a certain proportion and must be agreeable with its surroundings. If the range of proportions is exceeded, it is no longer beautiful and harmonious. What is harmony? Appropriate proportion is harmony. What is beauty? Appropriate proportional array is beauty. Golden mean is the most harmonious and most beautiful of all proportions. The development of everything is controlled by proportion. America should help the poor countries if it wants to become the world power. It should not be overly powerful, otherwise it will be punished by natural loss. A poor and backward nation should strive forward, otherwise it will perish. This is also the case with human being. If the population has increased to such an extent that it has lost harmony with the number of plants and other animals, there will be no way to sustain the continuous growth, just like a rapidly growing branch of a tree. If the branch does not break off, it will pull down or even uproot the tree. Since there is a mysterious power or law of nature to govern the harmony of proportions, the exploding population will certainly be controlled. If man can exercise the control by himself, so much the better. If population cannot be brought under control, then the power of nature will play its role. For example, wars, earthquakes, flood, fire, plague, famine, and teridity can all play their roles in reducing the population. Isn't the outbreak of SARS in 2003 an alarm bell knocked by nature for mankind? Proportion is a mysterious power in nature that controls the development and changes of everything in the universe. Who but the greatest creator has formulated this proportion? 17. Brain, 